Storms brewing again. Talking of things brewing, today we're talking about waste pipe work. Hiya folks, welcome back to the show and welcome to our self-build extension project that we have been working on for a little while now. We are up to some of the last little bits of waste pipe work for all the plumbing, mainly for the ensuite, but this kind of connects a lot of things together that needed to be sorted out. And in today's episode, I'm gonna be really taking you through a lot of the detail about how the waste plumbing works, why we've done it the way we've done it, and hopefully you can maybe learn a few things from that. And if not, you can tell us what I've done wrong in the comments below. So last time we were chatting a little bit about the plumbing up in the ensuite above, and I was gonna leave that for a little bit later down the line. But, uh, well, I tell you what, let's head on up there and I'll explain why we've ended up doing this now and then we'll come back down here and I'll explain what's going on here. We're up in the bedroom now and that is the room above the garage where I was just standing 10 seconds ago. And I wanted to explain what's going on waste pipe work wise. As I say, I wasn't planning on doing this quite yet, but we figured since the plaster is going to be coming soon, it would make sense to get all the boxing for the pipe work done so the plasterer can skim all the plasterboard that we'll put on here very shortly. And the plasterers can do that while they are skimming the walls and ceilings in here. So it made sense to kind of get this done now. So that means we've been very busy over the last couple of days getting all of the waste pipe work run in, making some final decisions on where stuff's going. And of course, you can't beat a bit of boxing. It's quite cathartic doing a bit of boxing, I think. I quite enjoy doing that. And by the way, this is all gonna get filled with insulation. I've left it open at the minute just to show you what's going on. But yeah, last time we were trying to decide where are we gonna put the vent stack. Well, as you can see, the vent stack is here. That goes all the way up, 110 mil pipe, all the way up into the loft. And in the loft, it's just an open pipe at the minute. It will at some point connect to either a vent tile or it'll go through the roof. But um, I would rather do it to a vent tile if possible. I just need to check with building regs if you're allowed to have uh, a soil vent stack going to a vent tile rather than the pipe going through the roof. Let us know in the comments below if you know the answer to that question. I've had a look through the regs and I can't see anything that tells you that you can't run the vent stack to a vent tile. And I'm pretty sure that's how it's done in new builds because you very rarely see the soil pipe sticking out through the, the roof of newer houses. Anyway, we'll briefly talk about the layout of this bathroom. There's gonna be the toilet over there. So that is the poo pipe for the toilet. That goes down into the garage. I'll show you that in a minute. It wasn't really practical to run the vent stack anywhere around here because we're too close to the window. It would have overlapped the edge of the window if we've got like boxing over there. So what we've done instead, this comes all the way under the garage ceiling along here and then we're just taking a branch up and that is our open pipe to allow air in and out of the system. What this also allows us to do, I've just put a boss on the bottom here. So it's black on black, it's hard to see, but there's a boss at the bottom there that's just open at the minute, but that will be for the basin waste. And I've found generally in my experience, when you're putting waste pipe work in, put your final connections as low as possible. So that's why that boss is really low down. It just means that your boxing's lower. It means that you're not going to run into any problems with falls and things like that. I have run into issues in the past where the connection to the main soil stack has been too high and then you can run into all sorts of problems with that. So my general rule of thumb is to make the connections as low down as possible. Basin will be around here. Hot and cold water supply for the basin. The hot and cold's gonna run all the way around the room because that needs to supply the shower as well. I think we've talked about that. Toilet over here. The toilet's gonna be off this back wall. We were thinking of running off this wall, but you would end up when you're sitting on the toilet, your knees would be very, very close to the, the basin that's gonna be over here. So it just made a little bit more sense to have it running off this back wall instead. And then there'll be the shower tray in this corner. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna drop the waste straight down and run the waste pipe work under the garage ceiling. So let's head down there now. That corner up there is directly under where the shower is. So all we need to do is just drop a pipe straight down there along that wall 
and then I fitted a boss into that 110 mil pipe there. That's the down pipe from the toilet and then the waste goes along here and then here's the branch up to the air uh, admittance or the, uh, the vent stack. So that goes up into the loft and then it continues round, continues round and just goes, kind of dodges the boiler flue and then it'll connect into the main soil stack here. So this is the new soil stack that we'll put in. That then drops down all the way down here. This was put in all, right at the very start of the renovation. So that comes under the floor, all the way under the garage to the front. And then there's an inspection chamber on the other side of there. And that's it into the main public sewer from there on. If you remember, one of the first jobs that we did on this project was putting this inspection chamber in at the back of the house because there's also a public sewer running left to right all the way underneath every single house on the street. This gives us a nice easy place to, this is just temporary obviously because we still need to dig the gullies in and whatnot. Not particularly urgent, but at the minute rainwater is just going down there. We're on a combined sewer, so it's absolutely fine here for rainwater to go into there, but it depends on your local authority and on your water board what needs to happen with rainwater, but it's not really practical to do soakaways here, something to do with the clay soil or something, I'm not sure. But yeah, this was right to start the project. All we're gonna be running into this drain is rainwater and kitchen waste. We're not running any bathroom waste into this because I don't particularly trust this sewer. The sewer at the front of the house is a bit bigger. It's easier to access if there's any problems. This sewer runs under pretty much every house on the street. So I don't particularly want to be adding bathroom waste into that. I don't think anyone else has. And then in terms of rotting access, we've got a rotting point down there. We've got a rotting point up there. We've got a rotting point here. And I think there's two rotting points in the kitchen as well. Or there might just be one, I can't remember. Either way, we've got many, many rotting points and inspection chambers as well. So it should be nice and easy to maintain. And that kind of brings me on to why we've decided to do the pipe work like this why we've brought it all the way around here. We could have dropped the soil pipe vertically downwards here, but I think that would be a bit annoying coming in and out of the garage, having to kind of walk around a boxed in soil pipe. And there's also the risk that as you're bringing stuff in and out the garage, you could knock it and you could damage it. So that's why we've taken it backwards to the other soil stack and then it goes forwards again. But it's absolutely fine doing it like that, as long as you've got easy access with rotting points and things. The other thing that we had to consider here, and it was another kind of non-starter for bringing the soil stack down this wall, is that under this corner, again, I don't know if you remember, right at the start of the renovation, the mains electric cable for the house runs under here runs under this corner. That's why when I put the underground drainage in, I had to bring it in about two foot from that wall because it wouldn't be safe to dig down here because we would almost certainly hit that electric cable. So we've kind of dodged the electric cable and that's essentially why we didn't really want to bring the soil pipe down that corner. Oh, and in order to get this soil pipe in, I've had to put some paneling up on the wall up there. We've boxed in, do you remember the arch? The, we always knew that we couldn't keep the arch because we knew there was gonna be a pipe coming under there, but the arch is under there, but it's, it's boxed in now, hidden away. And over here, do you remember the old funny kind of kitchen window that looked into the garage? Well, I've bricked that up. So you're looking at my handiwork on the bricks there. It wasn't particularly easy because of the, the size of the opening. It meant I had to kind of go for a third brick, a full brick, and then a two thirds brick. That was kind of the only way that we could fit it in. I wanted to do it in such a way that you could tell that there used to be a window there because this will all be painted and once it's all painted it would just blend into nothingness but we've deliberately kept the old sill there because that's original to the house and we haven't toothed this one in it's tied in but it's not toothed in so that you can tell where the old opening was because I think it's nice to kind of keep little things like that that hark back to what the house used to be like and you can kind of trace back the history of the property that way. But yeah, I had to get that done because I knew I was gonna be running this soil pipe across here and I don't wanna be doing brickwork 
when there's the uh, soil pipe in the road. So I figured I might as well get that done. So it's been a busy few days, really. One other thing I wanted to show you here as well, I've already um, put intumescent filler around all the edges of the garage ceiling here. And I'm also gonna put some intumescent sealer around all the openings into the garage ceiling, because as briefly mentioned before, there has to be a fire barrier between a garage and a habitable space. So if you start drilling great big holes in a garage ceiling, that breaks the fire barrier. So you need to deal with that. And as well as the intermescent filler, what we're also gonna have is some intermescent pipe colors as well. This is some um, here. These things are great because you can retrofit them. They come in in two halves, but I've got 210 mil ones and one 40 mil one ready to fit. So as soon as I've fitted the 40 mil waste pipe for the shower, then I'll fit all of these. There's no massive rush to get this done uh, as long as it's done before it's all signed off. But yeah, what are these? Astro Flame uh, PFP pipe closes, apparently. So uh, that'll do the job for the pipe collars. And by the way, this is the intermescent sealer that I'm using as well, in case you're wondering. So that's a good job out the road, really. It means that when I come to fit the bathroom, everything's ready, which is great. It's a waste pipe work that always takes forever. As I say, the final bit's gonna be to hook into the main soil stack here. I've already got the kind of branch connector. That's also got a rodding point on. How many rodding points have we got? We must have about six rodding points on this system. So that's gonna go there. And in case you're wondering how on earth you get that in, well, I'll be using a slip coupler, which I've lost, where is it? I'll be using one of these. So it's a, a rubber slip coupler, and that allows me to make a cut in the pipe anywhere, slip that down, pull the whole pipe out, connect up the branch connector, put it all back in, and then this will just get slipped over the join, essentially, and that is, the way to deal with a problem like this where you can't move this pipe up or down so it would be physically impossible to get the branch connector in the only other thing that i'm gonna have to do as well is this needs a socket on the end because we've got a male connector on the bottom of that so that needs to go into a female connector and obviously once we've cut that we'll be left with a male so all i'll do similar to what i've had to do here this is a solvent weld female connector so it basically turns a male into a female and then that's what I've done here to let us get around that problem and I'll do exactly the same thing here. Should be nice and easy running the shower waste into this because as I say it'll come down here bring it in clip it along the wall we've got plenty scope for fall and then we'll bring it out to the boss connector up there. I quite like these boss connectors because obviously you can put them anywhere on the pipe. There's also another spare boss connector here. That's, I haven't drilled into that. In case you're wondering, you just use a hole saw and drill in. I think it's a 54 mil hole that you drill through. Dead easy, you drill in. The main thing that you have to watch for is when you drill in, you don't accidentally drop the little bit of plastic down into the pipe. Make sure that your drill bit catches it because otherwise you don't want like uh, the, the kind of circular bit of plastic blocking up your soil pipe. I know what a lot of you are gonna be saying, and it looks a bit Blade Runner, and I do agree, but the reason that we've done it like this, and we could box it all in and you would never see it, but it's a garage at the end of the day, and the lovely thing about the way that I've done it is it's almost zero maintenance. There's nowhere on the entire system that you can't get to. So if there's any leaks, if there's any problems, if there's anything where I have to run a new pipe in, it's really easy to get to. There's rotting points galore. There's pretty much no pipe couplings in places that you can't get to. So it's very, very unlikely, well, A, that you're gonna get a leak on this system. And if there is a leak anywhere, it should be really easy to get to. I've mentioned it a lot of times before, but think maintenance. I see so many installs being done where it looks lovely, but I know for a fact it's gonna be a nightmare if anything goes wrong. Anyway, we'll leave it at that for today. My next job is gonna to be to, as I say, insulate inside the boxing up in the bathroom and then I can plasterboard that. That room should then be completely ready for plasterers, I think. Oh, one thing I forgot to mention as well, pretty much everything I've done uh, 60 to one fall, I think off the top of my head, but again, don't hold us to this, I need to double check, but I'm pretty sure the regs for soil pipes is between 
uh, 1 in 40 to 1 in 80. So I normally shoot for 1 to 60, which simply means for every 60 centimetres you come along, you drop 1 centimetre. What I normally do is my spirit level is 1.2 metres, so I know for every 1.2 metres I need to drop 2 centimetres. So all I do is I draw a level line with a spirit level and then I mark two centimetres down at one end and then I mark between those two points and that gives me my 60 to 1 fall. Anyway, as per usual, any questions or comments or anything like that, pop them down below. Remember, I'm putting a lot more information about this build in terms of tools I've used, materials I've used, all the plans, basically a full summary of everything about this self-build extension is on selfbuildextension.co.uk. You can also subscribe to the member zone, members.cosforthandyman.com and there's extra information on there as well kind of helps keep this channel going in case anything happens to youtube stupid wind anyway for now take care folks look after each other be nice to one another i shall see you next time tatty bye